Hello, Kyle. This video is going to be a fan request because I was asked to talk about Thanos vs. Hulk, which is not a book I would have picked up of my own accord, but like I said, fan request. So here we go. So first off, this is the first issue of a mini-series where I'm wholly unfamiliar, so I don't really feel like I could be spoiling anything because our end page is that Thanos meets up with the Hulk, which I hope you would have figured out. So, um, a lot of the story actually revolves around Pip the Troll, um, who hijacks Bruce, drugs him, and leaves Bruce slash Hulk on this... It looks like a planet, but the way I understood it, because it's the two personalities meeting, and there's a dialogue with Bruce saying he always comes here when the Hulk is in control of the body, but as soon as he leaves, he forgets about that. Which I'm pretty sure contradicts some stuff about like him thinking about something all in Hulk form and whatever, but yeah, whatever. Um, this would make me think it's an introverted thing, like they're trapped within themselves. But at the end, Thanos comes to this place of introspection because he wants to confront the Hulk, is, is what we know. And I find that super confusing. Um, there's a good chance that they will touch upon this and it might play in as a huge part of Thanos is always death and clearly with them being so introspective this could be like on the edge of death itself so that could be a cool thing but the way it's hampered out here it, it feels like this could be a cool thing but it isn't yet it's just kind of maybe there I feel like I'm inserting a lot of my own thoughts and feelings into this, which open to interpretation isn't necessarily bad, but when I feel like I'm doing more of the world building and writing than what the actual story is, not sure that's the best approach. Then about half our comic, and not like the front half and then they drop it, just random pages throughout, although some in a row, deal with this bar at the top, which is just I guess Bruce, though I think the first one was supposed to allude to be Tony Stark because it opens up with Tony Stark in, in the Iron Man suit because he just walks around in that thing. That makes no sense. Um, but uh, this eye thing's there and they kind of pull out as you go along these, which is all well and fine, but then they pull out to the point where you see him on the planet, and then they're talking, but you saw him on this planet before, so the fact that you see the whole round thing doesn't really matter, except that the Hulk's there. And that's when they drop it, but you would have gotten there anyways, and so this whole device of the top bar to try to add in this frame that has a lot of dead space on the sides feels wasteful. Um, I feel like just a regular panel dropping in and maybe kind of a hue to cause some juxtaposition which is what they tried to do in a couple pages but it never panned out didn't really work out it's bad framing it's trying to play with stock comic framing and tweaking the formula which is admirable but if it's not going to pay off if it's not going to do anything this is clearly your idea of how to build this thing and you don't find a way to make it pay off. Why? Why are you doing this? So, um, Smith, uh, Andy Smith, who's the inker, I'm sorry, uh, it's Starlin who did the penciling, good to know, and also wrote this. Drop the ball there. Uh, yeah. Also, there's a lot of assumed lore in this comic, which isn't a horrible thing, except this doesn't feel like the comic where that sort of thing should be assumed. Um, you come in and Iron Man's all in the huff that Hulk's out and about, even though Hulk supposedly, I thought, was supposed to 
be shield slash avengery at this point so i found that a little off um there's a lot with pip um his girlfriend's right up here and he rescues her but he can transport anywhere so why his girlfriend would ever be an injured to begin with is confusing um there's a relationship between pip and thanos based on something which they do explain readily but then the fact that, okay, if they have this relationship, but they're still at odds and they seem like enemies anyways, is confusing. It's like, pick one, I guess? It's uh, weird. What Iron Man has to do with any of this is confusing anyways. And then Pip's girlfriend's confusing as well, because he's all worried about her. But the minute he leaves, she's like hitting on everyone else. And that kind of confuse me and then they bring up Annihilus who's the ruler of the negative zone but we're not in the negative zone he wants to deal with more than the negative zone I mean him wanting to conquer more than the negative zone is fine and that's always his thing so I don't think that's too much but like yeah, how he's going about this or whatever I don't know um, also the way that uh, Hulk and Banner are written is a little confusing because they sound a little too similar, not the Jekyll Hyde sort of break. So, in a lot of ways, Hulk sounds a little smarter, if not still a bit grammatically incorrect. Uh, so, I, I don't know, I feel like the writing um, didn't do a good job. There's a lot of exposition, and somehow so much is still unexplained. It's, it's a weird dichotomy that I don't know how how this could exist if it wasn't for it being said in this Marvel cosmic universe sort of thing. And that um, is actually a bigger point I want to get to. The Marvel cosmic universe has a lot of lore and a lot of stuff built up on it that is really kind of only for those who already know about it. Um, if you weren't already invested in this, it wouldn't hold a lot of weight because a lot of these characters' motivations and movements are actually tied to a lot tighter and smaller amounts of story because they haven't been as used as much as, say, a Deadpool or a Spider-Man or most of the X-Men or an Avenger or any of that. And so a lot of it comes from really old stuff that might have been rehashed or whatever, and then more recently with the whole Annihilation Conquest deal and kind of the fallout of that for a few years until that more or less dropped off, and then very recently. There's also a lot of the Infinity stuff that ties in from another angle with like your Adam Warrock and your Silver Surfer and all that. But there's also characters that have a certain amount of weight that seem to come in randomly. I know Annihilation dealt with Annihilus and a lot of that, but that ties to a lot of the characters more held in Fantastic Four than this stuff. Old school Deadpool, you're dealing with Landman, Lockdo, and Lake, and they have small ties to all of this, but they're handled in such a way in the Deadpool comics that feel like their own context. I actually didn't know that they exist in any comics outside of Deadpool until just looking it up before. And it was very minor, and I don't think it mattered a lot, but I mean, the idea that they existed outside of Deadpool is weird because the way they were written for Deadpool was held and worked in that, in its own context. What I'm trying to get to here is that a lot of these cosmic books assume that you've read a lot and don't create the context for the characters or organizations or relations within the book themselves, and whereas that might be asking a lot for a four-issue mini, this is not truly a four-issue mini. A, it's built on the backs of God knows what else, and essentially is a Hulk spin-off, as Hulk has his own series, and a lot of those elements are coming to play in this book. The Thanos elements are negligible, and then a lot of it has to deal with Pip and his girlfriend, and like Blastar, and Annihilus, and all that that's coming in randomly, and it's like, okay, that's fine, that's fine, it's good to have complication layers and bring things together. But in a first issue, I should have a clear onset of the motivations of the characters, and if some of them are held back, hold back the character at least maybe a little bit, so that you can give what is there enough 
room to breathe so that you have something to hook into. So far there's about six characters and why they're doing what they're doing is really murky. Hulk is trying to roll with the punches but before that he was out on a vacation because he needed to soul search. That seems irrelevant now? I think it was just a way to get him out of the shield compound but someone breaking in to get the Hulk through the shield compound is more interesting. Uh, what Iron Man's doing there, I don't know, what the shield connections are seem more of like lip service to the current run. Thanos, Thanos's motivations are driven by curiosity of the Hulk because of some lie that Pip sets up because Pip wants Thanos to fight the Hulk, but the why doesn't really make sense. Even though there's like kind of an explanation here, it has to deal with this fate of the world, but why is that now? Because Thanos is literally just chilling like a villain until Pip shows up. So it makes no sense. Essentially Thanos is doing nothing or high as hell contemplating what probably death is rather than what life is because that's his deal. But this freaking troll guy is just stirring up crap for no reason. And it's not like he seems like the malicious sort of like ho ho shenanigans sort of character. It's just it's weird. It, it's really freaking weird. And then Annihilus and Blastar want to blow shit up, I guess. Which is fine, but why they're going to so much lengths to that instead of just blowing up some random planets or whatever that don't have a pretty good track record of being protected. Like, you know, Earth doesn't tend to work out and there's other planets. Like, it's just... Why? 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 Motivation is important. Another confusing part about this book is um, the background of it. So, for those on the know, Starlin has done a lot of Infinity shit. The Infinity Gauntlet, yes, yeah, sure, good, classic, standing on its own is a really cool thing. But then there's like the Infinity War and the Infinity Crusade and the Infinity cow. I don't know. But essentially, he was starting to do a new Infinity thing, especially after uh, Marvel threw Thanos in the Avengers movie, and he didn't really see much of that, and he got kind of upset, so he's gonna do some more Infinity stuff to try to stir up whatnot. And uh, Marvel said at first, no! Fuck you and your Infinity rehash you're living up to the Infinity name because it never ends, and it's the same story, more or less. I mean, yeah, change some players, change some whatever, but if you've read the Infinity Gauntlet, most of the big Marvel players are ixnade and irrelevant by the fourth issue. So, this was a big kind of news item in the comics world about a year ago, I want to say now. So the fact that this book with this creator exists and that it's a lead up to some sort of infinity fuck you thing is super bizarre to me. It makes me feel like maybe some of the hmm, of this is rush in a way to drum up some notice and to make it feel more eventful because whatever infinity thing is there's the build up of this book beforehand and why it's Thanos versus Hulk because that's a kind of baity title to grab some dollars. It, it's also a way to get people who are looking forward and looking to try to invest maybe to get it. It seems like the last audience this book was created for were people who wanted to sit down and actually read it. Um, eh. <laughs> but to be fair, I can't 
can see some of the appeal. If you like the cosmic characters and the kind of insertion of Hulk there, because he's on that Titan level, and a lot of these cosmic characters, it's this bizarre might. And what's really weird about cosmic marvels, instead of dealing with like energies and policies and high level sci fi compared to where most sci fi sort of stuff would go, you get more of big brutes duking it out on this bizarre, barren landscape that's in space, but not really of any actual cosmic worry, except that if someone wins, the universe blows up, and you know that's not going to happen, because that'd be dumb. <laughs> but it's this, you know, fate of everything, and the, the stakes are high. Which, I, I mean, I get the appeal of that, but if you don't build that and layer that in some way, it's really just kind of... Eh? So, this first issue is laced with problems, but it's also laced with potential. It would be interesting to see if any of this potential can pay off in the coming issues, but the shaky grounds that it's set up on makes it seem like that's one of the, it's less likely than some other books because it's just not it clearly doesn't have the care that a lot of other books come out with so it's weird and this is so much of the reason why I wasn't going to pick up this book is because this to me is just emblematic of the problems with cosmic marvel stuff so yeah. So hey, there we go. If you want to recommend a book for me to read, oh, what am I doing? Um, let me know, and I'll try to find a copy and uh, talk about it. There you go. Have a good one.